Well, Ann Coulter is a best-selling author and one of the very few people to predict a Trump presidency way back in June of 2015, and she did it on tape. The question is, is she happy with what's happened a month in, especially in immigration? She joins us now. And thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So you me. wrote a book that I think influenced the president a lot on immigration, um, and you've been a pretty strong advocate for changing our immigration laws. How are you feeling? Are you satisfied with what the Trump administration has done so far? Um, so far, I give him an A+. Plus. Huh. Uh, he got an A just for replacing Obama. Okay, and the plus so comes from what? noon on January 20th. Well, he's up against, I mean, he can get to the DACA stuff. He can get to, that's the dreamers. Right. Um, who are, by the way, committing murder and child rape. Um, but um, it, we've never had a president who's being opposed on all fronts like this, including from, as my column today is about, Republicans in Congress, including the entire federal bureaucracy, including the entire federal judiciary, including the fake news. And he's right about the fake news. So, I mean, considering all of the, he has to do, he's... He's Gary Cooper out there in high noon. He is standing there alone, and he has done so much in the first month considering that. Is he making his case effectively, do you think? Is he bringing the public along with him? Is he explaining why he wants to do this well? Uh, I think so, and, you know, there are enough of us to perform backup details, but look at the way he's gone after the media, for example. No other Republican would have done that, and it's an incredibly important thing to do. Um, they keep lying about how he's, he's a, had a tweet against the media. No, he had a tweet against fake news. And if you disagree with, with the idea that fake news is bad for a democracy, well, then you can sign up with Goebbels and Lenny Riefenstahl, um, because that is what he's saying. And we are getting fake news. We're getting it constantly. I now heard the third time, and I haven't even been watching very much TV, third time tonight um, that, um, in fact, many studies show immigrants commit less crime than natives. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. That's an absolute lie. Um, what these phony studies do, and they're all hidden behind paywalls on the Internet. So I actually had to pay at some point to read it to get and find out what That's they're doing. That's one of the most commonly repeated talking It's points. absolutely a lie, um, which I describe... A, a lot in Chapter 7 of Adios America, but the studies that allegedly show this do not compare immigrants to Americans. They compare immigrants to Americans who have been convicted of a serious offense. No, we wanted to get immigrants who are better than ex-cons here in America. It's not comparing it to all Americans. So none of the studies are a flat comparison between recent arrivals and native-born Americans. That's right, and thank heaven. I mean, one of the great things, one of the reasons Trump is getting an A-plus is putting sessions at Department of Justice, because could we get some numbers on this? As I describe in Adios America, the government hides this information. They won't tell us how many immigrants are in prison, and I don't mean just illegal immigrants. Legal immigrants, I mean, isn't that worse? The government checked you guys out and let you in. Um, the government won't tell us that information, and I hope one of, under Trump, we will start to get some genuine information. It's just like the claims on um, voter fraud, for example. I'm so glad Trump brought that up. Wait, wait, so just to back up uh, one sec, so just the bottom line on the crime question is, in absolute terms, immigrants, legal and illegal, are more likely to commit a crime than native All Americans. the evidence suggests that. I mean, look at, I go through that in Chapter 7, and since the government won't tell us, I notice that only my side is asking for the facts. Their side is not asking for the facts. Why can't the government just count? How many immigrants are in prison? I mean, they've had significant contact with the government. Right. They've been arrested. They've been prosecuted. They're sitting in, in prisons that we are paying for. Could you count? No, the cens census can't tell us that. Why do you so think they don't? I mean, they count because everything else. I think they know what the answer would be, which is why I think it's worth pointing out. I'm the one who wants the answer. Our side wants the absolute numbers. So what I did in Adios America is I looked at other things. One place where you can get some of this information is looking at prisons, um, because prisons need to keep, need to know the nationality of, of their prisoners because of gang warfare. So um, they have very detailed records on inmates in New York State, for example, um, and, you know, there are thousands of Dominicans, one German. <laughs> so if One you, day. Let, let's say you were in charge of the federal government, how would you prioritize it? What would you do immediately and then secondarily on immigration? Well, I think he's doing this right. I mean, yes, I do want him to get to the dreamers um, and to get to the legal immigration. I mean, everybody, there is this weird um, kink 
even conservatives have in their brains, legal immigration good, illegal immigration bad. Well, no, the Boston Marathon bombers were legal. <laughs> they, right. are, they, all of these refugees, the ones who shot up San Bernardino, the one in child of an immigrant in, uh, in Orlando, these are all legal immigrants. Since 1970, we've been admitting more than a million immigrants a year, 90% from the third world. The vast majority not only vote Democrat, which is their main purpose for being here, um, but take consume vast amounts of welfare. Why don't we just have an immigration policy that brings in people that help us, that makes our country a better place? That, it seems to me, was the theme of the, the Trump campaign. We're going to look at this from so the perspective of So what would that look like? Now, how would you filter it? So, I mean, clearly there are a lot of immigrants who are a massive net positive for America, and the mm. statistics are pretty uh, widely known. Not too many anymore. Et cetera. But, but you can point to uh, quite Most a few. Most of them are pre-1970. So how, but how would you discern between people who want to come here who are likely to help the country and people who are likely to hurt the country? Um, see if the New York Times wants to write up a glowing profile on them every time we do something. I mean, that's what they did on this ref on the travel ban that Trump did. I noticed they, they pulled out certain refugees. Usually it wasn't the refugees themselves. It was a parent who wanted to come here from these countries. And wow, two cancer researchers. So apparently the New York Times is aware that that's a desirable characteristic in right. an immigrant. Being a cancer researcher, for example. So how about we only get the cancer researchers and the smart smart ones and the ones who are going to compete for your job and my job and their jobs and not their landscapers jobs. Is, is there a country that does this well? Um, Canada used to do it well. I don't think it will under Trudeau. Um, Switzerland, you have to be there for three generations, I believe, um, to become a citizen. Um, oh, sorry, Australia and New Zealand. And what's interesting about that? Um, they have a $14 minimum wage in Australia. Why is that? It's a natural minimum wage. Nobody had to pass a law. You didn't need Bernie Sanders out there. It rose naturally because they didn't dump low-wage workers on their country. Are you disappointed in anything the president has done? Um, oh, no. no. I mean, the thing there's, no, there's not one thing that he's done where you thought, ah. I think he should tweet more. <laughs> Come on now. What, what would be I the purpose of that? I love his tweets. <laughs> I love them so much. It drives the media crazy. Everything. And I wrote in Trump We Trust, E Pluribus Awesome. Um, I wrote it with never Trumpers in mind. I understand what the complaints are with Donald Trump. But then as I was writing it, I realized, no, all the stuff that I used to say, okay, well, there is this baggage, but he's the only one who's pushing and the only one in my lifetime to push, push in issues that are important for America. I started to realize, no, I actually like even the stuff, even the bag. What it's about fun. his staff? Are you impressed by they the most impressive people? Do you think Spicer's doing a good job explaining the White House point of view? Well, no one can do it as well as Trump. But do you think he's doing relative to the press kind secretaries? Of kind of boring. Other than that, I have no complaints. What do you think of Reince Priebus, White House Chief of Staff? Um, I don't really know the details. He seems fine. Um, my, my favorite human being is Stephen Miller, and I do think Trump should take him as his vice president for the second term. <laughs> is, that, is that an expression of your lack of confidence in Vice President Pence? Oh, yeah, no, we can't have Reagan, Reagan, Bush again. No, 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 no. It's got to be somebody you know. I mean, it could be Kobach. It doesn't have to be Miller. <laughs> <laughs> and Coulter, thank you. Thank you.